So hello everyone uh, who's joined us on uh, Zoom and on Hintology uh, for this uh, the 18th uh, Abstract Photographers International Forum where people from around the world, uh, mostly from Instagram, chat and talk about abstract photography. And uh, today is a kind of special day because um, we're doing a, a tribute to one of our earlier members, one of our earliest members, our first members, uh, Michael Crowley, who uh, is a fantastic abstract photographer and, and quite well known and loved. And uh, he, uh, yeah, he passed away. And so we'll be doing a tribute to his work today in the format that we've done previously, where we'll look through, uh, everyone who's here on the Zoom has looked through uh, Michael's feed or his work and selected something, uh, selected a piece that they like and that they'd like to talk about. And uh, then we'll just dis discuss from there. And uh, the uh, the tagline on, uh, on Michael's um, feed was, it had to do with, um, oh yeah, it was entropy, unexpected beauty and composition. So entropy, unexpected beauty and composition. We're going to try and circle back around to those themes uh throughout as a kind of a kind of a guide rail to the to our discussion as just just for fun um i also know that uh, michael's partner annie was in touch with me uh through email and she may or may not uh, join us at some point um and uh, so that that might happen too. We'll see if that uh, that materializes. But she's really happy we're doing this, and she thinks it's very thoughtful. And uh, yeah, I'm sure she'll get a copy of this when uh, when we finish. Um, so I think the next thing we do. Uh, Before yeah. we start, I have a question. Yeah, please. Yeah, I went on his Instagram account. I thought he had a lot more images than that. And like, there's a whole series of images on burning embers, which yeah. I, I couldn't find. I was curious, to, did something happen to his account? I Does don't you know. I have, I, some people sent me copies of the burning embers uh, images. Uh, so I don't know if they got that. I think those are from, there is a series on Instagram for that. Yeah, Vincent just said it's a separate account. Ah, okay. Yeah, because I was looking for some of those images. I, I didn't know where to find. Oh, uh, Tara's just sent uh, a link for that. Okay, so. great. Thanks, Tara. Ash tracks. Okay. Welcome. <clears throat> okay. All right. Yeah, I was wondering too if he had a website or something we could uh, promote. But uh, okay, nice. All right, so I'm going to share my screen at this point. Uh, share screen. And uh, uh, let's. Can you see ash tracks there? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, All right. Bird? Yeah, this is these are I guess this is a separate account which is worth we can um we can share that to, yeah, that's in the chat now. Good. Okay. So uh I have uh, some photos in order. We have, uh, how many people do we have online with us today? We have like, is anyone counted? I'm just checking. Maybe one, two, three, four, five. So basically we're looking around 10 minutes, you know, same kind, same kind of deal as, as usual. I'll, I'll try to keep it moving around 10 minutes per uh, person uh, or per image, but also there's, I think there's some overlap in images so we can expand a little bit. Uh, okay, so here is the first image we have. Um, uh, it's going off. I see. Okay. I hear, can fine. you please move your tea? Because I, I have to put this down. Sorry. Gonna... Uh, do we know whose this is? I'm trying to see what the. Uh, I, that's mine. Do you hear me? 
Okay, Muriel. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's mine. Okay. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I, I didn't know uh, very well Michael's work, and uh, it was great to go through. Uh, but uh, this image is very particular. I think it's quite different of what he he does. Um, uh, and I like um, the well. He, Referring to the composition uh, of his tagline, tag I I like I, I think it's a very well composed image. I love the ge geometric uh, lines and which remains remain me a cubist paintings, um, and it it also evokes to me machines, um, the industrial world. Uh, something to do with uh, con constructivism, the, the Russian uh, art movement. Uh, really, it has an um, atmosphere of uh, between the the two world uh, wars, I think. And M Michael titled it uh, Asimov's Dream. And uh, searching, I found that Asimov's uh, was consider of one of the greatest uh, science fiction uh, author of the mm -hmm. uh, 29th uh, century mm -hmm. uh, wrote a lot uh, he wrote a lot about uh, boats about uh, well automatization and 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 boats and i think this title um, uh, points out the the mechanical uh, dimension of the image um, and I also, also I like the the effect of light and shadow. Uh, I I see I see um, someone a strange figure, but uh, maybe a dog or maybe a, a boat in the dark uh, geometric um, shape, and he he seems to be looking uh, to the left and is. Um, illuminated uh, by um, a beam of light coming from the right. And that um, opposition between light uh, produces a, a great uh, composition, I, I think, and a, a dramatic uh, intensity. And also, I like the minimalist touch uh, of uh, warm, Colors at the at the, or the upside part of the image, uh, uh, whereas all the the overall image is um, very um, uh, monochrome, uh, quite black and white. Uh, yeah, here yeah, it is. What I <laughs> what I can uh, beautiful tell. <laughs> beautifully said. No, beautifully said, uh, Muriel. Uh, I also am noticing your comment on the photo. I wanted to. I wanted to check too. Is this size better, or is this size better for you? When you guys see it, is this too big for the too screen? Too big for me, but yeah, too big for me too as big. well. Okay, it's a, it's too zoomed. Okay, this is better. This is better. Yeah. Okay. There. Um. Yeah. Is... Your your comment your comment on it, Muriel, is great cubist artwork. And uh, I, I, I thought, that, yeah, the cubist style there very is very well uh, is a good a good reference point. And it also yeah, it's says like, it's multiple exposure. That was the other thing I was going to mention. Yeah, uh, just regarding cubism artwork, it is also uh, uh, often cubism are are not so industrial um, uh, subject. I I mean it's like. The, Perhaps a, a mix of uh, cubism and uh, constructivism. I, I cannot. Uh, this mm. something like the Bauhaus uh, influence and something more industrial. I think. Right. 
and it's a multi exposure uh, image but yeah. I, I cannot uh, i cannot see how really i i don't know uh, the the mix the mix is so is well uh, done and uh, i i don't yeah. know if you you can see which part of uh, each original image is but uh, it's not so it's not obvious for me Nice. I'm going to ask uh, if anyone is uh, is on Zoom right now and they know there's like stuff happening in their background. Can they put themselves on mute until they're until it's their turn to talk? Just yeah, because. thank you. So yeah. I will. Oh, I will. No, thank you. Sorry. No, no yeah. problem. No thank problem. You. Thank you. I'm so. Yes. So, let me see how I can do that. Yeah, no <laughs> Sorry. Problem. That's yeah. okay. I, I just leave and then I will find out how I will do it. No Sorry. Problem. You just hit the, hit the mute button. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, yeah, we were talking about multiple exposure and how I, I was just saying how it looks very painterly too. It has like a painting effect. But yeah, it's hard to see where the uh, where the strokes are. Would anyone else like to um, talk uh, anything about uh, this image? Um, I do. I do agree with Muriel about the the cubism feel there, and um, and the industrial thing. And uh, it's kind of interesting because the cubists uh, were operating, um, you know, late teens early 20s and i used to show a, a picture of an artwork and i can't think of the name of it when i was teaching history and it was a very industrial sort of composition like this and um it it looked like robots it was a painting but it had cylinders and things and yet it was clear that these were representing um people and they they're playing cards and it was it was painted like right around the middle of world war one and um clearly the message was that you know the 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 soldiers were part of a machine and you know we're being we're gambling with their lives you know in the war and so when when you create something like this now it's like okay what does an industrial symbol um tied to in today's world mm. you know it's, it's, we're so we're, we're it's so now right. in a, it's now a nostalgia right well yeah <laughs> well or that we are so tied to maybe technological machines you know that that we and again this is this isn't uh like she said it's it's you know it looks metallic and and mm and very uh you know not not a human or a living form it's it's a lot of uh man-made structure or, or constructionalism like she said mm -hmm. so it's like what's this what does that symbolize now you know when you put it in context it's like okay right. what you know what is this in response to mm. right it could be the deconstruction of industrialization I mean, if, if you think about it in the first world, where, where, excuse me, I had something in my mouth, where manufacturing, I don't know about uh, France or Canada, but in the United States, we've lost so much of our manufacturing. Um, so the kind of like the fragmentation, mm -hmm. similar thing like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Excellent. We're going to move on because there's some photos I think are going to have more conversation than others. Uh, so this is the next one. I believe this is Anke. No, or uh, no, uh, Gudrun. Gudrun. Is Gudrun here? Yes, I have to unmute. So now I'm... Ah, yes. Okay. I, my notes are correct. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, I like this picture because it, it drags you in. Uh, you, you can see in the right side, uh, down on the right side, uh, 
quite strong colors. And then you, your eye is draw, uh, dragged in on a spiral line. You get the impression of a stair and you end in the center of the, of the image where you have this blue uh, region. Uh, and uh, somehow it reminds me of, uh, of a spiral staircase. And it also reminds me of a fossil. Uh, when mm -hmm. I looked at it, and uh, I I love the structure the, and especially the colors. And uh, uh, the whole image has also a touch of transition and corrosion. And uh, after I looked at it without looking at the title and all the hashtags, and I was asking myself, what is this? Uh, Uh, it is a very uh, unexpected. Uh, it is in the field of the unexpected beauty because I found that it is a lily pad when I mm -hmm. have uh, seen the the hashtag. So I, yeah. I would never get the idea. This is a lily pad. This is uh, the beauty of the uh, the unexpected beauty of of corrosion of transition of of a lily pad, and you get not the connection to what it is. Really, mm -hmm. uh, and um, what else can I say? Um, I also love this fine structure in this, all these, um, how to say, inside this, what I call steps here, which mm -hmm. are rotate mm -hmm. in the spiral. And um, um, what, am, what I've uh, on here. It, it also left me with a question at the end because the title of this uh, image is Pet and People. <laughs> Pet, comma, people. Mm -hmm. uh, Pet is okay. It's a, a lily pet. But uh, I cannot get the connection to, to people. So uh, this is a question which this image left me with. Maybe uh, the others in this forum can help me to get this point but it is uh, it's, the whole image is so beautiful that I have chosen it so what what pops uh, out to me is uh, the black marks with the white circles around them and that if you look at those different steps like they look at them as like faces that those sometimes line up as eyes and mouth uh, as you look around the ring there that kind of ring that uh, elevated ring And it can, I, that that's that's the first thing that I came came to was that maybe it's pad people like it's the faces the pareidolia or whatever of the uh, see, those black eyes with the white circles. Yes, yes, I see it now. Since you told this, yes, this uh in in the upper black region on these uh, what I call stairs, I really see the face now. Uh, oh, okay. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Would anyone else like to talk about this piece? Um, I I thought about composition. It just suggests Fibonacci, one of the basics of a composition oh. of the photo. Fibonacci numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The spiral. Yes. Well, what I saw in this, I, I couldn't figure this out to save my life. And I didn't see lily pad. When I looked at this, it, it looked like kind of these, you know, like you leave a, a piece of metal or something out in the yard through the winter, right? And you find these very fragile pieces. It would be like maybe you lift out a, a foil pan or something like that. And my first thought was that this was metallic in some way, but it had been, you know, really worked over by the weather. And um, which, and what I love about these is I don't know what it's made of, but the image is so great, I don't care. You know, <laughs> you spend a minute going, well, what the heck is that? And then I go, who cares? This is so, you know, it's so, uh, um, Uh, arresting. I'm like, wow, 
all the other things in this, I'm like, eh, you know, the material doesn't, isn't, isn't really even almost relevant here. This is a really wonderful work of art. And I'm like, I don't know how he did it. And it doesn't matter. You know, I'm perfectly happy to be ignorant because it, it does so many other things on other levels. So I was really, and then I look at the thing and went, lily pad, what? Oh my gosh. You know, that was the farthest thing from my mind, which I, I think means that it's really good art because, you know, it isn't so obvious or it's not a picture of something, which as abstractionist, we're always trying to get away from. Yes, I do agree. It, it is very, very difficult to to classify. We don't know if it is. A, it, it could it could be vegetal, but uh, also uh, um, mineral and perhaps organic as well. It, it, I, I could see a bowl or something um, like that inside of a human body. Or... Mm. Yeah, similar things can I I remember there's a there's a type of cake pan that has a hole in the center. Do you know that type of oh, yeah. the bun pan? Is that a bun cake? Okay. I didn't I didn't know it's -E. bun okay. So that reminded me of bun of a bun cake pan that had been again corroded <laughs> or rusted out. I also feel like that center part almost looks iridescent a little bit. So I got the, the first sense I thought was like it was some automotive pan. Like some automotive part, like a part of a muffler or something that had been similarly like left out, but it had some oil like on the bottom or something. Okay. But uh, it, it also has that or very uh, organic feel, like it's a. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you know, um, an orifice. <laughs> it could be too, you know, like it, uh, it almost looks like a lobster or a shrimp. Yeah, it's I thought that, that kind too. of um, armor type feel to it, like kind of uh, articulated. Mm. The segmentation, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It has a lot I also like oh, sorry, uh, the, the three dimensionality of this image, of the spiral, because the spiral goes downwards into the picture. Uh, it starts on the right side and then it moves downwards mm -hmm. until you end up in the center. Sorry, Wendy, I. I... It's okay. I was just actually going to say something very similar. And almost looks like a set of stairs going down. A yeah. spiral staircase. Or a jellyfish, I see. Mm -hmm. Or in another universe altogether. This almost <laughs> looks like those pictures from the Hubble telescope. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. with the crab nebula or whatever those are, you know that it, it could be something in outer space. And, uh, you know, Michael had a monster zoom lens to, to really <laughs> capture. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a wonderful image because it look at all the stuff it's doing. Yeah, it can be so many things. It stretches you in so many ways. It's even oh. like that, <clears throat> that uh, center image too. The more I look at it, the more it, uh, the shading inside it kind of can suggest a few things like a bearded a bearded face looking at you with kind of feathers uh feathers on his head or it could be that and in like if you look deeper into that center part i feel like there's a lot more i feel like there's a lot more happening in there uh for me i see um a seashell <clears throat> and it's mm. interesting everything that people see i can see in there I can see everything except for a lily pad. I just don't see a lily pad. <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of it's completely, that's great. When the when the original thing completely disappears <laughs> inside the, there we go. That's have, abstract. I see, um, um, I see the mathematics of, uh, of, the uh, the algorithms that life takes, but also just the algorithms that force takes. So there's a reason why circles and spheres are so universal. There's a reason why all celestial objects beyond a thousand kilometers in diameter are spheres. It has to do with the fundamental nature of gravity and, and the way that there's a unity in the center. And it's circularity, it's centeredness 
um, to me, implies that mathematics. And I understand that life takes algorithms. Now that I know it's a lily pad, and I had no idea it was a lily pad, um, that, that uh, you know, life has a basic set of algorithms. Leaves have a basic set of algorithms. And they come from a central point, and they branch out in various ways. The way that this was playing out struck me as part of that universal circularity, and I didn't quite understand how or why. And then, and then it's become so complicated by its history, mm -hmm. uh, its life, its death, its decay. Um, and to me, this is uh, this is something that uh, that helps bring um, meaning and profundity to an abstract image that that it can evoke something universal and uh, and grand, uh, and it definitely does that. Absolutely. I think when you talk about unexpected beauty, like you couldn't pick a better picture, really. Like who would flip over a lily pad that's rotting and looks like a freaking like it looks like a mushroom and go, yeah, that's that's what I want to put my camera on. There's something in that. And to do just, it, share it and for us to go, yep. I just want to say, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, I just uh, since composition is one of the topics, I I also like. Um, so it's interesting. I like this this kind of compositions, of course, also like spirals and whatever. And but I noticed. So I just wanted to ask, what is this for you? But that I often like either put it in the center or in the upper right corner. So in this case, sometimes like maybe in the lower but it's like these diagonals and this top and it's completely intuitive it's like if i if i put this focus in the lower left corner it's some sometimes it usually doesn't work so here it works actually because it's like a downward really so it's direction it's that's the direction so i wonder if you also have this kind of something similar this kind of uh, because I feel like maybe I'm just predisposed to this somehow, and my friends usually say like, "Oh, I read the image and I finish like in the in the lower like uh, right corner," and which I usually ignore somehow. I have an answer for that. I mean, when I what I just realized too, part of what's disorienting about this image is I'm pretty sure it's upside down. The shadow is at the top. The light is coming from underneath. So I think it's flipped. And so that's part of what makes it kind of do a trick on your eyes. Like you're not sure what part you're closest to, you know, because mm -hmm. I think it's upside down. I think I, the shadow think is underneath it. <laughs> and Tim will now stand on his head to show us. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it makes I, it a little more I think it makes it feel a little more hidden as well. Mm. You know, kind of it's like cowering. Whereas if it was like that, it would be blooming. Whereas if it's decaying, it's kind of more hiding. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have yeah. a fascination with um, agave. Is it agave? Agave leaves when they die, and they all, like I said, the rotten ones at the bottom are so gorgeous. So I yeah. have quite an affinity to that. And I adore copper. So that colour in the middle really kind of speaks to me. Um Yeah, no, I, I just, I, just, I quite like, like I said, that kind of hidden feeling. I, yeah. I think that dis, the disorientation of the lighting you were talking about, Tim, the, that that uh, the lighting comes from an unexpected direction, and it it uh, it helps um, um, it helps delay your moment of recognition, your moment of finding the context, and it's in that moment of delay when you don't know what the context is, you don't know what it is that your brain seeking um, footing is most open to connections. Um, yes. And so I, I, I think that the, that the fact that the lighting is inverted is a big part of why this image works. Um, yeah. I don't know if anyone else has mentioned this, but I, I the more I look at it, the more I can't help escape the idea that the central blue portion is an eye socket with an eyebrow ridge above it and then a big nose down in the lower right-hand corner. Has that, I'm sorry, I've been in and out of this. Yes, I don't know. oh my gosh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's like it's 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 a consciousness um, staring at you. Wow. So the funny thing, what I wanted to say, and this links into it, is like it's the it feels like the similar play a, a, a sculptor uses that optical illusion to cre to create an eye socket or an eyeball or a pupil in a carved thing. It's that relief that creates the uh, the iris. And I feel like this. I was going to say it feels like he's doing the same thing here with that. Uh, with that lighting, 
and yeah. popping the relief of it kind of comes out at you instead of going get sunken in it plays with the 3d is it coming out at you or coming in at you that kind of optical illusion so that when you said the eyeballs and that totally i totally saw it I, I want to also address something that Tara said about composition, um, and I agree with Tara. So I'm always seeking a resonance point, and and it, I almost feel like by putting the center of the eye socket in in a, in a place that's not a resonance point, it's a, it's an anti resonance in the rule of thirds or in the rule of perfect thirds or even in or any of the compositional you know. Uh, dogmas that we all uh, have accepted from classical art. It, it, it avoids all of those, and and it gives that it gives a feeling of unbalancedness and um, and almost like of of drunken chance, you know, encounter. Um, and uh, I wonder if that was deliberate or if that was just how it worked. Uh, I wonder if this artist is Crow his name's Crowley, right? Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if he uh, um, if he crops. And whether this was deliberate or not, um, I take it he's not in here with us. Uh, I also wanted to ask whether he's uh, related to the famous uh, Svengali-like spiritualist from the end of the Victorian era, Alistair Crowley. But the name definitely evokes that same uh, Ordo Norvensis, um, you know, mystery seeking. Um, mm. Anyway, I'm, I'll, I'll be quiet now. I see somebody texted in. Uh yeah no yeah absolutely well i don't i don't know if you hear at the beginning if you're asking if if michael's here he's the part of part of this thing is that it's a tribute because he's passed away so we we left with the unknown uh, answers which is part of the part of the treat that adds to the mystery um thank thank you i wasn't aware and that may, that helps explain a lot and yeah and uh well i hope he's uh if he is related to alistair crowley that they're <laughs> having uh a cocktail in the uh in the netherworld yeah maybe they're maybe they're uh checking out our live stream right now uh okay let's keep going to our uh our next uh i think this is on case maybe no 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 no, no. Whose is this one? Well, maybe this is Josh's. Yeah, this is mine, and okay. I'm sorry, I've just been talking. So that's alright. No, it and... no, it's okay. okay. You 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 all mentioned right. that you may not be able to stay for the full thing, so I'm I'm glad to get you on early. And don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So goodness, uh, you know, I keep lifting my glasses. I'm sorry. I know the. Um, I'm I'm doing this on my cell phone. I find myself out of position. Uh, okay. All right. So this this photograph. So this is this artist is new to me, and I just briefly looked through, and I wasn't aware that there were multiple profiles, um, and I didn't see the fire stuff. This is really the only work that I saw of him. This is one early one in this particular profile. Um, anyway, it's I, I um, it's one of those situations like the last one where something is going on which which reveals. Um, forms that evoke natural forms. So um, there's a, a, a type of a sea creature that's that's not a barnacle, and it's not quite a limpet. It can move, but it's limpet-like. It, you know, it, it would be so much better if I had looked it up, and I meant to look it up before this meeting. The name of that creature. This this shape is that is is the shape of that creature, and that was my immediate association. But but the details are the folds. The details are the um, the textures of the uh, um, the staining or the fungus growth, whatever it is that's forming that speckled texture. It's almost sandy. It's almost uh, granular, and um, and that helps accentuate the the the, the texture of this um, wrinkled subsidence. It implies a swelling that has collapsed in upon itself. It, impl it implies that at one time there was some animating force which then disappeared and and left a, a an absence that caused this thing to gradually crumple in upon itself. And to me, that implied a narrative arc of something that provides energy. And then when it leaves, there's a collapsing. And um, and and I, I so relate to that personally in my own life as I'm, you know, 59 years old. And, you know, as I go through, uh, you know, a moment in my life where I had a, a, a powerful uh, connection with somebody and that connection disappeared. And now we're trying to forge a, f a friendship in the diminished space afterwards. It just evoked um, 
all of the different shades of loss. Um, and I felt it emotionally just looking at this thing that looked like a dead sea creature or maybe, oh, I don't even know, uh, a plastic bag. It doesn't matter what it is. And the fact that I don't know what it is, is what gives me the freedom to um, feel these feelings in association with an abstract image. And uh, But I immediately felt that feeling. I, I felt the presence of something that had filled this space and then had left it. And then in the aftermath of that, the collapsing and wrinkling and, and, and decaying texture, the growth of, uh, you know, small uh, colonies on it that left that speckled appearance. It, uh, um, it's a portrait of age, but without the context. And, and to bring up Taurus's point again, it has a very interesting and odd um, uh, composition that is unbalanced and unsettling and doesn't let you achieve a resolution point. This is the uh, movement in a symphony where everything's in a minor key and nothing resolves. And, um, and to me, that's an important part of the, uh, the compositional message that uh, – um, that we have a, a subsidence into death, which is beautiful and textured and is not finished. Um, so, you know, kudos. This picture immediately grabbed me. Beautiful. I like that the, the word that came to mind with you when you're talking was like memory foam. Yes. Like it's like oh. a, a long term memory foam of like holding the space and shape of something valuable or precious that was there that no longer is but the kind of uh weathered imprint of it remains yeah as gudrun said like a fossil yeah um, i love that image too yeah yeah like a fossil it, it it held the impression of something that once was alive um but now it's it's taken the form of something else mm -hmm. um yeah good metaphors Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, the, the fossil thing has me seeing kind of a dinosaur shape too, like a large turtle almost shape. Yeah. On a landscape in that kind of dusty landscape. And a crow. And a crow, yeah. sure, yeah, a crow's good. Mushrooms come to mind too, like kind of that something with spores and... Yeah, yeah, I definitely see a brontosaurus in there. I also see a Yoda face, or maybe Yoda's skull. You know, um, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a shocked, a shocked face, a shocked. And again, I don't know. Obviously, I, I'm feeling a, a theme of hidden, but at the front, the two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and a, again, a sort of an arm coming across like this. Like, oh, please don't see me. Let me just crawl away. <laughs> <laughs> also, looks like a beetle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, again, it's it's something it's clearly a, not a natural. It's a synthetic material, but again, evoking very natural, natural uh, textures and images, you know, similar to his previous one. Right. A natural an unnatural image evoking a natural metaphor. Yes. It's interesting. I slightly also see because I have quite a fascination with mold <laughs> and the <laughs> forms that it takes, um, and it could be like a form of mold, but not quite from the ones that I look at. So, yeah. Very cool. There's also a line across the picture which divides the picture into an upper and a lower part. And in this sense, uh, the structures look also like roots. Something has roots into this area with many little dots and some roots and something above it. So uh, like above the earth and below the earth. Yes. Mm. yes I, I love the that. The tones also, the tones, like this uh, colder tones on the top and, and warmer on the bottom kind of creates this kind of also division. Mm. Yeah, about there's a, a spot in northern in Northern California where you can drive past. It's a it's a foothills we call them, you know, and it it's I suppose it's the result of erosion, but it has those same kind of you know large 
sections, but they're smooth, you know, because the rain has, has washed away the soil or whatever. Um, that's, that's a very yeah. particular landscape to Northern California. I know exactly what you're talking about. I call them the elephant hills, the coastal range yes. of Northern yes. California. That's um, exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Ooh. It does. It looks like that. Yeah. Mm. So are, you that, about, like, are you talking about the tones, the colors, but also the shapes? Well, the tones and colors are usually kind of, of well, tans and browns because it's earth. But when you go at different times of the day, you know, the lighting and the shadows are, are mm -hmm. really dramatic. And then you get different, you know, when it's a cloudy day, you might get something like that. Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, first thing in the morning, they're kind of red. I mean, it, it's, it's a, it is an experience to be had. And it's just, you got to drive down the highway. There's nothing to stop at. You just look as you go by. <laughs> But it, it's yeah, it's a fun experience. Those elephant hills are um, are composed of dried grasses, which are sort of naturally yellow um, about 11 months of the year. And they're just green, like, you know, for three weeks in the springtime. Yeah. But but there's something about the, the translucence of the of the dried grasses that on a, on a cloudy day, they pick up the grays and and on a. Um, in the distance, they start getting some of the purples of atmospheric diffraction, and uh, definitely in the sunsets, they're like golden orange. And um, I totally know what you mean. So yes, this this does evoke that, but that's very geographically localized. I wonder if Mr. Crowley ever spent time in Northern California. You never know. Do we know where where was uh, where was uh, Michael located? Do we know where he was? Anyone? Okay. I think Paul would know, but I'm no, I'm not sure myself. I I think it might have been Chicago. Okay. Uh, I'm not totally sure. I I had a brief conversation with him a couple of years ago, and I, that was my. And he says uh, Iowa. I and he just. Oh, Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, that's what, I knew it was a Midwest place. So. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Neat. Okay, just as a reference point, it's kind of just interesting to know. I don't know if that's where he spent a lot of time, or if it, that's just. Uh, very cool though. I'm also I also just wanted to notice the name the only thing he wrote in there was the opposite of irony and said wordplay underneath. So I'm wondering like what the word play is, the opposite of irony. There was, um, there was one of the comments about how wrinkly it was and how it hadn't been ironed. Ah, so okay. Got it, got it, got it. Uh -huh. Yeah, he has a has a <laughs> take irony. Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> That's I was brilliant. I was thinking, you know, I was thinking maybe brilliant. there was iron involved. <laughs> I was like thinking no, about like so. the material being ironed. <laughs> oh, that was way off. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Okay, great, <laughs> awesome. I'm also wondering too what those two little objects are. It looks like it could be a cigarette and a button or something there, but there's just two little two little random objects, and I feel like again, offers some clue to the mystery of what it is we're looking at. But again, we've arrived too late to the scene of the crime and we can't like quite piece together the artifacts, you know? To me, it very much looks like a, a boat cover. Um, uh, I used to do sailing and the, the covers that they put over the boats to stop the water from going inside when it rains um, have this kind of texture and they're almost uh they're very thick material but then i think that would be a reason why you've maybe got the mildew because obviously they get wet and then dry out again um and like josh was saying it's obviously been full of water and then that's you know drained away or evaporated and you've been left with these little shapes if i had to guess i would guess it was a roof like the tar on a roof like roof felt um, yeah, something like that. But, uh, but yeah, that doesn't explain the, why there was a bubble there. Um, but I hear you, uh, it, 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 it does look like a tarp perhaps, but I don't see the stitching. Um, and I'm glad I don't see it. That would have helped mm -hmm. me, uh, find a context. Mm -hmm. Um, on the other hand, if it were roof tar, there would be a tar seam. I'm not really seeing that either. So I still don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. Again, another mysterious, uh, artifact with no uh, no official answer. Beautiful. I don't know who pointed it out, but the seam 
uh, the line going through it, I thought, um, definitely made me think of uh, geology, you know, of stone of some sort. I live mm. in Cornwall in the UK and um, sort of lots of rocks by the sea. And there are a lot of, you know, lines going through the rocks. But sure. the rest actually make sense. The spots do. Um, speckles, should I say, but not the wrinkles. They seem too smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Tim. I think that is a cigarette butt in there. Yeah. Uh, I, I zoomed in on it and it sure looks like a cigarette butt, uh, but a mummified one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. All right. Let's keep moving. Let's keep on moving. Let's keep on trucking. We got, I think this is Alan's, I believe. Yeah, that's my uh, my pick. Right. Um, I think I picked this because when I look at it, I think of two words: simple and elegant. You know, and um, I also love flowers. I mean, I, I've shot many, many flowers, but I don't really show them because it's so hard to shoot a flower and present. A, a different, a unique view. Um, you know, and, and I mean, flowers, I mean, people shoot flowers every single day and I get tired of the, the just, oh, here, here's a flower, you know, full on. And, uh, and I've done a lot of those myself, but there's something about flowers, you know, if um, actually in San Francisco, we had a, um, a dahlia garden and it was in Golden Gate Park and it was about uh, five minute bike ride from where I lived and uh, every year in June or I, earlier than that, I think in May they would plant uh, new dahlias and by around July they started coming out full in full bloom and they were incredible you know so and if you kind of look at a flower and divorce yourself from everything you know about flowers and just look at them as a visual entity they're really kind of abstract. There's a lot of abstract stuff going on in flowers and uh, they're really quite beautiful. But the way he isolated, I, I'm not sure what you call these. Um, right, uh, the stamen? I think they're the stamen. Stamen, stamen yeah. yes. Um, the way he isolated the stamen and put those in focus and threw the rest of the flower out of focus in a real soft way to accentuate the um, hard edge of the stamens. And, um, you know, and I, I think that Michael's strength was in his eye and his, his ability to compose an image. And um, I don't know, I just, I just love the way that this image is composed. Um, well, actually look at my comment there, a fresh way to look at a much photographed subject. <laughs> yeah, they were exactly. <laughs> that, that kind of sums it up and that's why I was so attracted to it. So, and again, I mean, having photographed many flowers myself, um, yeah, I, I don't think I ever would have thought to do it this way. So, so he, he gives me a new way to look at a flower and, uh, yeah, I just, but again, I, I think elegance is the, the strongest word that comes to me and uh, I appreciate it for that quality. Beautifully said. It's interesting. I was going to choose this one. Um, I didn't actually post one up because I'm never sure quite how to do it. Um, That's <laughs> and okay. I love it. I, I, uh, but I absolutely adore this one for a couple of reasons. I've noticed he's done that vignetting around the edge um, with a lot of his images, which kind of frames it, because if it just went off to white, it wouldn't bring the focus in quite so clearly. But also with those kind of like finger-like stamen, as you say, to me, it feels very alluring and also very scary. Um, it's a bit like kind of black fingernails trying to draw you in to who knows where. Mm -hmm down that deep dark hole so it's quite sexual I suppose um and yeah that's that's kind of what I felt um so it, it felt like a love-hate relationship with him. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah he seems to like putting the main subject in the left bottom um section of the image interesting nice uh, notice but yeah, he's, he's done that a few times <laughs> 
But it's interesting because is it the main? So that draws you into the think it's the main, but actually it draws you to the other, which is more the hidden, which is what we're kind of slightly all about, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, right. Where did the <laughs> stamen come from? Looking at the mouth of the, I mean, this part of the flower has been used as sexual imagery. I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a pretty common metaphor. It's almost um, a trope. <laughs> right. But I think again, like a fresh way to look at it, the way he's kind of washed it out, I I think is a bold choice, but it it really works. And then as I, what what did you call the edge? What do you call that edge? Like a burnt edge, or like I called it like a vignette. Vignette, I mean, vignette. Not, right, right. But without that there, if you put your hands there and take that away, it would just go. But it yeah. really right. I think especially with that white, yeah, with that, yeah, it's a great choice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's also okay. picked an unusual format, so upright. And if he had picked like five by six, it would have also worked, I think. Or three by four. Mm. Have we talked about his framing? Because he always uses the curved okay. edges on his photos, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is like if the the black uh, distills uh, are we are going to 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 enter back in the black uh, orifices, the black hole. I don't know if uh, you can understand me, but uh, it's like a circular movement towards uh, the center, the the black hole. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And the contrast on the stamen with the really quite, you know, they're not black, are they? They they've got the you know the white. They've got the um, highlight. Mm -hmm. on our fourth edge which contrasts then with the dark hole which makes the dark hole <laughs> i don't know why i'm focusing on that but that makes that more alluring if that makes sense mm -hmm. it's, it's like a hint, you know it's it almost look like nails don't they fingernails oh yeah that's what i was saying it's like come on come in mm. <laughs> mm. you know also that we talked about vignetting around this but it, this actually brings to mind something else i mean michael has been photographing for 50 or 60 years. And I know when I started, like a badge of honor was to do full frame photography. So when you printed the negative, you would print the outer edge of the negative, which would create this kind of, I, it's not a, a real vignetting, which is more subtle and gradual, but this is like extreme. Mm. And I, I think that's what comes to my mind that he was, I don't know if this is a full frame thing, uh, looks like it might have been from his uh, phone camera or something, but uh, but it, it just brings to mind the whole school of uh, full frame photography, where you're just making a statement. I compose in my mind, and what I see is is everything I see in this, this frame is fully intentional. So. Um, I don't know if that's what he was doing, but that's what comes to my mind when I look at that, the way he framed it. Mm. Mm. Can, I be really, can I be really picky? I know when I was looking at it, and because I used to or do photography before it was digital and everything um, professionally, but and I love cropping because, you know, you can always take away a bit more and a bit more and a bit more until you've got it kind of quite there. That's when you literally cut it and then you go, oh, ouch, you know, I've got to print another one now. <laughs> it was just at the very bottom. There's that teeny little knobble of dark down on the bottom left hand side. And I just wanted to take that away and just bring it up a whisker. But that's maybe making it that because the, the whole visual is kind of, as you say, with the the dark hole and the fingernails, <laughs> that's kind of central. But you know that little bit, that teeny weeny weeny bit at the bottom? Mm -hmm. and that that troubled me, and I don't know, that's just pernickety mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> it's a and bit of the petals um, in, that, in that lower left. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, like, like Alan, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, go on. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> uh, like, like Alan, I... I uh, I'm always trying to um, to find the abstraction in flowers. That's a, a big theme in my work, and it's very hard to do. And I immediately, uh, um, you know, recognized that it was a flower, but really appreciated the way that he found abstraction um, in in the flower. And and I think that the the, the tight end crop and the super narrow depth of field um, helped dissolve it for a moment and make you consider the forms on their own terms, uh, and for a moment suspend 
the recognition um, that it's a flower, and that's where it it, uh, it it draws some of its force. And there's there's a, a pattern here that's clearly coming from life, um, but it's it's somewhat mysterious. And we see the forms echoed in the the base of those pistols, uh, the stamens, um, and uh, and 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 in you know and in the heads that that there's a, a sort of almost like a unity, but it's 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 hard to say where that's coming from. And that's part of the mystery. And I appreciate the way that he's brought a lot of mystery to this image of a, of a flower that we all recognize as a flower. That's quite a hat trick. Mm -hmm. Two things. I'll add to that. To say, um, well, go ahead, go ahead, please. The next picture in his feed is also the same flower, yeah. um, but mm -hmm. it's in yellow yes. and it's cropped in a very different way. And I just think that that's, quite interesting that he has kind of bleached out the, the colors from it mm. and i'm just wondering well, like the, why he I chose used, to do that it looks like the one i used as the cover for this uh for this uh session which was a much ye yellower one yes. is that the one you're talking about yeah, yeah that okay. one yeah yeah, yeah I, i'm also looking at the name I'm, sorry go ahead oh i'm i'm sorry i said it is a different photograph it's the same oh. flower but it's a different okay. photograph it's I'm not looking, differently. I'm um, looking at the title and it's called the Sentinel series. And I'm hmm. wondering if those fingernails that we're looking at, that if those are the sentinels, those are the guards in front hmm. of that mouth yeah, at the back or whatever, that the sentinels are the that those are they're kind of yeah, they're standing guard of uh what's behind it, the heart of the flower, the most precious part of the flower. The holiest of holies. Absolutely. You know, one other comment too, you know, looking at these stamens and you look at they're attached to these stems that go back into the center of the flower. So, I mean, if you get really kind of esoteric, I mean, you could look at, you know, maybe you have an idea beginning in this, the darkness of the center of the flower. And then it comes to this rush of fullness in the stamens, you know, kind of like how we come up with ideas and then. I mean, it's like a flower in itself anyway. A flower starts from a seed, but then you give it some time and you nurture it and it develops into fullness. And this is kind of like a microcosm of, you know, what's happening around that, if that makes sense. Beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> nice. Again, that theme of, uh, that Josh touched on uh, is coming up again of, of, of of uh, Michael freeing freeing forms from their labels or freeing f from a, a gap where they're, yeah. where you're, and again, this is what abstract does so well and why he's a great abstract photographer, but freeing for forms from their labels for just enough time for enough doubt to creep in to have a whole bunch of different narratives of what it could be and how it could, how to interact with it. Mm. Nice. All right, let's continue. Here we go. Several people pick this image. Oh, lovely. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so I don't is this part of the is this part of the burnt ash series or no? No, this was on the feed that you sent us. Okay, the yes, yes. Okay, this is on the Angie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, is this? Uh, I think Wendy is one person who picked this one. Anyone else pick this one? No, but I would have. I didn't notice that one. Okay. I just saw his Instagram. I thought there might have been someone else who sent me that. Okay, anyway, Wendy, go ahead. Mm, it's gorgeous. So just a, a, a few words about Michael's work in, yes, in over words about his work. His work has a has really wonderful mood um, and mystery to it. And I see that throughout his work. And I think that is achieved it, from his macro perspective and his composition. Um, it is in the composition that these images emerge and how critical composition is in interpreting um, what he's seeing um, in, in, in his work and in really in all of abstraction, composition is, and I heard Alan say this a couple of meetings ago, it's king, it's, it's really, really critical um, in abstract photography. Um, he uses, his, his work has a lot of mood and drama and intimacy and emotion to it and and then i think it's created by you know like i said the composition and and his color 
is very subtle. It's not brash, it's subtle, it's earthy, it's soft. Um, I love his use of color. Um, in this one, it's, it's fairly monochrome. Um, I am, I am a sucker for burnt uh, surfaces. This is probably metal, I don't know, but he tells us there's some soot involved. Um, it reminds me actually of a volcano, a caldera, um, which I think is very fitting with the idea of soot. Um, and ash and uh, lava and um, what happens when these volcanoes erupt. Um, it looks like a landscape to me that had, just has sweeping beauty to it. Um, I, I, I chose this image because I thought it really illustrated well the theme about entropy, unexpected beauty and composition. You know, um, certainly unexpected beauty in this soot and achieved through composition. Um, it's interesting to me, and I really appreciate Josh's contributions to this group because he's made me think more about um, the forces of nature um, on these surfaces. Uh, the forces of nature on these surfaces act as the forces of nature in rivers and and on land and um, other natural forms. Um, and you, I think, I, I don't know if it's the energy of those forces, like the fire in um, the, uh, how would you say, the chaos of the fire. But for me, I think chaos has a lot to do with these natural forms showing up in our surfaces that, that we love to photograph. Um, and uh, I guess that's all I really have to say um, about this image at this point. I may have a response. If, if I could jump in, thank you, Wendy, for uh, for uh, acknowledging. Um, and I, I definitely see all of that happening in this image. Um, in, the, in the cracking that's in that white area in the lower left, um, I see branching of rivers. I see uh, um, that natural algorithm. So in, 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 in chaos theory, that branching of rivers has that scale independence. You see it in circulatory systems. You see that branching in, in, in rivers in, uh, in the forms of trees, in the natural algorithm that plants take to maximize their surface area. But it's also, um, in this case, from contraction and cracking. And uh, you see it in the in the right hand area as well. The contraction and cracking has created a whole bunch of little islands that are all sort of created out of that same process. Um, and it's emergent. It's a, it's emergent, and it's and it is it's scale independent. Like you might see that same branching in the structure of the Nile extending across yeah. thousands of miles, but you might also see it on the beach in a, in a rivulet in water that's you know just a few inches across and you can't say what the scale is. So in, in a way it's like, is this could be a caldera with a river in it viewed from a satellite photograph, but it it could also be a micro photograph of something extremely tiny. Um, and that's- It looks like a, a slime mold. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but they're only a millimeter wide. And yes, the, the spores kind of all come out like a big fluffy um, explosion. And it, it looks like that. Exactly. And, and that scale independence um, speaks to a universality of, uh, of something that's happening. And, and, and where is that universality coming from? Um, you know, that these crackings and that, and that, that even the, the orphan little islands sort of are, are betraying that same um, uh, genesis of, of the form in, in, in a natural process that has these emergent structures. Um, it's, it's, it's it's coming from something that's inherent in the way forces manifest themselves in in matter and uh, um, and and also and I think this is important that that in that those examples of chaos theory from rivers to to, to trees and plants and also cracking and peeling paint it's it's a unity that 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 extends both across life and also death um, growth 
like in a plant, but also decay. And that the fact that the forms in growth and decay, life and death, take some of the same forms feels profound to me. That's, and yeah. that's another cornerstone of, uh, of good abstract art is that it connects to something that feels profound. I'm going to see you're profound and I'm going to raise you one. The name of this <laughs> picture is titled Journey's End. And yeah. the more I stare at it, the more I see like uh, an image of death as a thing of beauty. <laughs> and I see a head, I see a head that's cracked and uh, like a, a skull that's dead in the center where, where um, Wendy sees that mountain, I see a head that's cracked that is like the head of a, you know, the dead yeah. person. And then you see like the smoke, I see like the smoke or like the soul or the essence of that thing emerging or um, um, returning to the universe. And so like, I just see it as a very clear image of, of what happens to them as, as you're dying, like the, the physical form is cracking and fading. And then there's this kind of smoky mist that turns into this wistful uh, kind of comet going around the cosmos there re-emerging with the cycle of life like i feel like a i just feel a real deep beauty of that uh, uh the imagery and in this situation it feels like wow okay that's uh and i don't know if anyone else is feeling that but that was yeah, I, I saw so it. I, that little I, white I, circle can i talk for a second that that white Thing where the where there's kind of the brown behind it and and the crackling that looks like the tree there and when I first saw that I thought that looked like the little passage to Middle Earth or you know the nether world or something it was like yeah the tree is kind of guarding that spot and that's like totally unrealistic and a magical thing and all but I said that looks like there's the journey into you know the second universe or the parallel universe or as Tim was saying, you know, that's that's the journey into, you know, the afterlife um, in like a side of, in the mountain where there shouldn't be a hole or a transparent spot to go through. But, you know, the what is it? The wormhole is opening up and it's time to go in or something like that. Mm. The journey for me is it feels like I'm inside a car and I'm looking out through the windscreen. It looks like there's a maybe a building on the left and some trees, maybe some fuzzy trees through the the kind of steamed up wind windshield. And it almost looks like a windscreen wiper on the right hand side. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, it feels like I've been inside the car traveling and now the journey's finished. And maybe I'm just thinking, well, I don't quite want to get out yet. Um, it doesn't feel welcoming outside maybe. I don't know why I've just said that, but that's how it felt. Um, yeah, and the journey has been inside the car and it's now finished mm. but it looks like it's ending in a kind of inhospitable place yeah you it know like a bit uh, right an exit an exit from an inhospitable place because what when, when you were saying about the journey and exiting i know it's not i just kind of zoomed in but it's like kind of all of this is going on and to me I, until i zoomed in well, the far left top mm. left corner it's like birds migrating like yeah kind of whoa it's all been dark and my dark and mysterious and then it's like let's escape to who knows where you know it could be death you know light can be death <laughs> yeah or to some other land um and yeah. it's also very subtle and beautiful that there is another hill like there there's this, this uh bird yes. and then so this is really not a head at first i saw the head and then i saw this is an opening like a passage so and there is this beautiful movement and there's a passage and then you see that like a like a effect of the fog like uh, of the distance basically that this yes. hill is is more like a uh, gray that's right like a who knows what who knows where <laughs> yeah, i hadn't seen i hadn't seen that it's making me see that uh, those uh, the reverse so this the cracks that are going into the skull instead of cracks those are branches of a tree that's kind of going over that hmm. opening right yeah maybe some birds flying behind the branches and like, a, like another volcano or whatever in the uh, <laughs> in the distance definitely that flips the perspective for me a lot that's cool thanks taris 
this is yeah. almost <laughs> this is almost like in Utah. There's a place called Arches, where these stones and you uh, these stone arches in the sandstone cliff, and you look through it, and you uh, it's almost like a people. So the I didn't notice uh, before, but this bluish kind of mountain in the background continues on, and you can see it in the hole. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it really oh, yeah. looks like a little bit like a peephole mm -hmm. to, the, to the, the distance with this branch hanging over um, the opening. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Neat. To like really, again, that optical illusion of something be able to flip perspectives from relief to ground to, uh, what's it called? Ground to subject or background yeah I, I really that's that's so playful and so such a fertile um just when you're dealing with silhouettes blacks and whites and stuff like that to be able to pop this pop it uh either way either to see it as a head or see it as a whole that's great right oh, yeah, I, totally... I see oh go on i i see like a lasso uh under the white uh face uh, like a lasso which which is launched and came back and this loop uh, well this curve is um, like a, a a loop and we we it it reminds me of the one in the flowers uh, image uh, that Alan chose and also um i think the, the this kind of loop it's very present in michael work and it it make me think also in the life cycle and death and birth and some things that came back uh, that come back you're talking about that's the swoop around the composition what what are you referring yeah, to but well above the white face uh, I see a wide profile, and uh, just above it, there is a um, a kind of white line uh -huh. that go down and go um, uh, above. Uh, yeah, goes <laughs> up and then around that one. Yeah, and then came and then come back. Uh, right, this one here, uh, like a lasso, <laughs> like a, a loop. Uh, yes. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yes, again with the spiral. That kind of idea of circles. Yes. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 And the metaphor of that with life and birth. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Thanks for, for translating. No, no problem. No problem. <laughs> it could be okay. a sideways thought bubble. <laughs> right. Right. It, 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 it has. <laughs> That's why, and that's where that's what I had like the idea of like at the moment of death, you're kind of like that your soul is leaving through the top of your head and like just scattering is like this dust and particles into the back into the blackness of the of the universe that black and white again with that almost has like that kind of yin yang feel to it mm. right mm -hmm. it makes yeah. me think of it makes me think of dream world as well actually so like when you're in dream world and you know presumably it's darkness it doesn't necessarily <laughs> work when you're in dream world but as you're saying somebody mentioned um that beyond the white speckles on the right top hand side there's the sort of imagery that could be like sort of trees and things up up on this corner and then going down to that like that hill that we said with they're not birds but the speckles above it but below that it, as you say it's just that separation between conscious and subconscious dream wake world if there's a difference um yeah i love that and the connection and the composition with that you know with the right again so another commonality i'm hearing again is that kind of horizontal line that makes a landscape that kind of um uh identifies two like yeah those two different what was i going to say yeah like the horizon line it was in that <laughs> steam line we had like it seems to be a reoccurring feature that kind of horizontal line that'll uh suggest a separation or yeah but, but a, a misty separation which is what i like in this one it's a misty separation in other ones it's a clearer separation but it's i'm just noticing other common does anyone else follow dave the decorator um because he separates yeah. his images in that way he has a lot of images and he had a whole series which were um the horizon was in the same place but they were 
you know, comprised of very different mm. subjects. That's um, a cool series. I know sometimes we talk about other people who aren't here, but that's a, an interesting person to look up if you don't that's know weird. him. What was that account again? Dave the Decorator. Dave the decorator. Dave the decorator. Wow. <laughs> can someone put it? Can someone put him in the chat? Put yeah. His, yeah, uh, I can do that. Add him in the chat. In in that dividing line between you know what seems to be out through the windshield, and I love that metaphor. Um, so we have the hill with the the birds, the speckles. We have the 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 out of focus trees and the mist in the upper right hand side. But then the 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 decay that's in focus, the 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 head with the branching trees and the and the and the speckles of broken paint in the right. Um, it, it seems to be in the foreground. It seems to be inside the car with us. And the the thought that occurred to me when when you said that um, windshield metaphor was you know road trip through Mordor, um, <laughs> and and. But but you can't keep Mordor outside the car. It's almost like maybe you didn't turn on recirculation on the ventilation it's system of your car in time, and now it's inside the car too it's with you. Right. right. Yeah, um, you can see Mount Doom through the the fuck the uh, like the grime on uh, that's come in through your air ducts. And right. Exactly. Matted and on think, your windshield. You can't. You can't. Um, ultimately, you can't keep these forces outside. That that they're inside too. Invasive, um, invasive yeah. forces. <laughs> yes. Well, right. this one rich with metaphors, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I mean, like I think, especially considering the situation of this being is, uh, this is. I mean, this is a great cover photo for what we're talking about when we're talking about yeah. this imagery. Great. Okay, let's keep moving though. We can come back to that one anytime. Journey's in. Next up, oh, we got some burnt things. Yay. Yeah, that's mine. All that's, right. That's, mine. that's that's beautiful, beautiful series. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm capable even to describe all of this because so I was uh, I saw Michael on the forum maybe once. I don't know. Probably I saw him mostly on recordings, which brings again the importance of releasing these videos that we still have. And, <laughs> Right. And then, as far as I remember, he actually he had his uh, house burned down and was um, completely was was it right? Oh wow! I don't know. Yes, I I have just read that on the introduction um, interview. Oh, that's maybe that maybe falls. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, oh, okay. and uh, so this this must be also really personal uh, for him, and then. It's a perfect vanitas, basically. So it's like you just have need a small wind, and it just blows everything away. And and then there is this also this word here: lifelong learning, like mindfulness, skills, discover. So and then it's all like futile, meaningless. Like uh, so, it brings this. On one hand, it brings this kind of ecclesiastes, uh, whatever, all is vanity, but it's also it's. Um, so beautiful. Uh, actually, I was thinking that we we talk a lot about chaos, but and it, this is chaos of form, but not in color. So there is no chaos here in color. So this is soft and uh, mostly black and white. It's kind of interesting that uh, there is chaos that we perceive as more as a form, but there can be also chaos in color as well, which we rather than kind of admit. Um, yeah, so these are all beautiful. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that there are not so many uh, abstracts, and I didn't see many of those. Like, uh, and that's, yeah. So you, you, you can just continue, <laughs> sure, sure. Problem. because this, yeah. What I'm, when I'm looking at this, um, just in my life experience, these, the, the text in there looks like a lot of the buzzwords from all these curriculum programs that they would hand to us year after year. Oh, this is gonna be the one that revolutionizes teaching. And after mm -hmm. teaching for many years, you go, yeah, right. You know, and <laughs> you know, and here it ends up in the burn barrel, which, you know, I mean, as a concept, of course, I believed in lifelong learning. And, you know, I taught for 30 years and, and, you know, I got different results and different kids and we moved and we grew, but the sort, when they try to put it into a curricular format, it just sort of kills it. <clears throat> uh, 
God. We just have to perform these these actions. Lifelong learning, you know, and it may just sick when you just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how to do that. And you'd have to kind of do it your own way anyway. And yet they come and check and say, did you tick that box? Did you do that thing? You know, while you're in an organic classroom with real children and, you know, actual situations. So for me, this kind of went, oh, yeah, that's where all the curriculum ends up. <laughs> kind of a best laid, <laughs> best laid plans kind of metaphor. Yes, yes, absolutely. For sure. I wonder, hang on, let me see if I can get to, here, I'll get this series up. But I wanted to read to you, um, Charmarie uh, also chose this image. She's not able to be here. And she just wrote something uh, she'd like me to read uh, about this about this image, maybe I'll put that image back and about but what her, uh, what she knows about Michael. So here's just a quick uh, quote from Char Marie that she sent earlier. She said, I wish I could be there to celebrate Michael Crowley's extraordinary gallery. Unfortunately, I'm attending a conference and unable to join you. I'm pleased to honor this remarkable man and photographer. I came across Michael's accounts uh, at Angie 2 and at Ash Tracks in 2019. It was love at first sight. The Burn Barrel series had me hooked. Uh, I find it I find it fascinating. Oh, let me see if I can do this. I find it fascinating to see the images that Michael found among the ashes. Today's image I chose from Michael's ash tract account uh, has been uh, was a keen wit. Oh, sorry. I, yeah, I chose it from his ash tract account. Michael has a keen wit, so clever at puns, as we see with his other account names of his ash tracts. Um, this particular photo, uh, this particular photo spoke to me as I had learned of his transition. I called the, I recalled the interview with Michael that Paul Rowland had done for Hintology. The story of his home burning to the ground and him reaching for his Leica camera from his glove compartment to document this historic event. So many stories of his life are woven within the ashes, as you can see in my chosen image. I see the chapters or pages of his narratives shown here on the left and the ashes of an angel on the right. Ashes mm. of an angel on a right. Does anyone see that? Is this this image? Because uh, the bottom right corner. There was another yeah. one where it was a similar comment. Okay. Uh, anyways, let me finish reading this. Um, I believe he has earned his wings. Uh, so to quote Paul Rowland, the images that Michael shares remind us to take a breath and refocus, quietly demonstrating that there is beauty anywhere you look. I take a breath and reflect upon this man's gorgeous body of work. This is Paul Rowland. Uh, to end with a couple, uh, and says to end uh, a couple quotes. Um, so Thomas Bailey Aldrich said, what is lovely never dies, but passes into another loveliness, stardust or sea foam, flower or winged air. Beautiful. Uh, another from Mitch Album, death ends a life, not a relationship. Oh, beautiful quotes. So uh, I'm just making sure this is the image that Shar sent me so we can confirm that we're seeing the right um right images here does anyone else want to talk while i'm a little bit clamped here we're not i read many of the uh, these comments the char left and it was like really my first impression and her was so often the same kind of it's uh, it's a good, uh 
And if she chose the same image, I would be even more surprised. Okay. Here, I'm going to uh, take us on a little tour through the ash tracts. Yeah, it'll be nice so, here. Can you see ash so tracts? Yeah. These images are from the buyer of his house, his own house. Yes. Is that okay. right? That's what he, he explains that in the in the interview. I just uh, pay the the link to, uh, in the chat, and he, sa he, he said uh, um, in nineteen uh, in nineteen forty ah uh, in nineteen eighty four, my house burned down with everything in it, including my Leica and ten thousand uh, negatives. Fortunately, oh. I still had I still had and hold Leica uh, with collapsible lens in my car's glove box. So I was able so I was able to keep shooting, starting with the fire ashes. Oh, that's really moving. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and so again, I mean, I'm curious if uh, some of the pictures we've seen of burnt things are all from his place or if it spawned him to look for more things in ashes, to look for more things in fire after having that such an intense uh -huh. connection with shooting abstracts with fire. I wonder if it'd be, you know, unfortunately Perhaps. we don't have the benefit to talk with him, but what a, uh, yeah, fascinating story to tell. This, this is encouraging to me because I always feel a little, uh, when I see photos of fires, like forest fires and cars burn out in fire, I, I get this, oh, my, oh, I see these images I want to photograph. I feel a little bit like a vulture. So I am just uh, <laughs> happy to hear that people who have experienced this also feel, see the beauty and <laughs> in the, the ashes and it just makes me feel a little less like a vulture. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean for sure. Like you're like, it's too intimate to take pictures of or that you're it's somehow. Um, yeah. yeah. You're preying on the death. Like um, there's a just a catastrophe, a, right? There's Annie Leibovitz made a series of pictures of Susan Sontag in death. You know, they were partners and, uh, and uh, they had children. I think Susan might have had children before their relationship. But anyway, um, the, somebody's some people in the family were adamantly opposed to it and were very angry with Annie for making those pictures, as mm -hmm. if it were like you know Wendy said it was intruding upon you know uh, um, you know the sanctity of death or whatever. And uh, yet she made them. You know she said well what could I not do? And they aren't garish or, or, you know, they're very respectful pictures, but mm -hmm. it's also, well, this is the end of this life, you know? And, and I have a, several of her books and it's, she explains it in one of them. I can't remember which one it is, but look it up. It's, it's, you know, same kind right. of thing. Do you look at it? Do you shoot it? And, you know, how do you process it? Right. How do you shoot something intimate? But also, like, again, he's taking pictures of the end of a life. Like, it's a, like, again, like you're saying, it's a document of the mm -hmm. end of a life. And the images of lifelong learning. Oh, like, talking about, like, uh, puns and stuff like that. Like, the knowing that, that kind of tipped me off to, like, okay, the playful, the playfulness way, for the way his mind works. But even with deep and heavier, more profound subjects, is something pretty admirable, I think. It's such a beautiful image. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's continue. I think Anke, <laughs> this is, uh, oh, wait, no. Anke? No, 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 no. No? No? Hang on. No? Hang on, where did I get you? Where did I put yours? I think I must have done it by accident. One second. Dun, da, da, dun, 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 dun. Yes. Hey. All right. 
So go ahead, Anke. Go ahead. All right. Um, well, I would go along the his titles with the starting with the entropy. And I think entropy, I looked it up, it has to do with disorder and decomposition. Also other things in more physics, but this is maybe the most applicable, applicable to us. And in the left part of the picture, I see the lichen and a line that has dragged up like a, oh, what do you call it? Chromatography. Um, the squiggly line near the top. Okay, yes, the rust, the line of rust there. Yeah, it could be anything. I, I was wondering, what is it? Is it a metal? Mm. And I also came up with what Josh said, um, the roofing cardboard or roofing tar, um, because it seems to have ripped. And so it must be a lot softer than than metal. Mm, foil or tin. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I think I thought it was roofing cardboard, like we maybe on a shed. It can't we be. We had it in the if house. It's called, in... If it's called oxidization, I think it has to be metal. Like I think that's right. The... Right. Yes, you're right. That's the, that's the hint there. I didn't read it. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Um, you're not you're it, it, you're you're interpreting the photo, not the title. So don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Um. What was the second one? Unexpected beauty. Mm -hmm. I also looked up in Wikipedia, which is not so scientific, but I looked up what is beauty, and they mentioned things like sunsets and landscapes. Um. Now, we're talking about unexpected beauty, beauty in the ugliness that some people would say, oh, it's garbage, throw it away, it's ripped, and there's dirt on it. Um, but oh, I found it interesting, the way it overlaps. Um, and I think in images, I like to combine something man-made, which would be the straight lines and the rivets or studs, which are perpendicular. Then something more like entropy, which could be the rip and the three-dimensional bits sticking out. Also the growth of mold or whatever on the left and the part, maybe the rust line or I took it as something traveling up on some organic matter. Um, yeah, then composition. Well, it could be like the lines, um, one on the center coming up. He seems to like that left part, <laughs> left bottom part of the picture. <laughs> and then moving to the more rule of thirds line above it, and then one even further out, which is ripped. Um, yeah, and the decomposition decomp on the material, which we now identified as a metal. <laughs> Which, yeah, the way on the rip part, the three-dimensional bit coming out, it also looks shiny. So it suggests metal. Mm, yeah, this is really what I've got to say about it. What I love about these burnt metal things, which, you know, Wendy is the real expert here, but if I were more of a chemist, I think I would, I would, would try to figure out how you get all these amazing colors when the burn is, when this is a burn and then left to itself because i know that you know go in if you haven't all looked go watch, look at wendy's pages but these burn dumpsters that we're, we're good at finding mm -hmm. 
the the colors that emerge out of that, I'm like, what is it? How did it get there? And and why? You know, I mean, what? Obviously, it's some kind of chemical reaction. And I know that a lot of these things they have adhesive and paint and and other junk on there that that is you know that melts and transforms. And um, and every once in a while, you find these just amazingly burnt things that have go from the warm colors to the cool colors and then they have something that looks sort of opaque and then you have things that that are very textured and some look like glass and like uh Anka mentioned that blue thing looks like it's shiny metal you know it it's just I mean it makes you want to go set a dumpster on fire just to <laughs> And no, I don't, you know, I put that in the footnote. Do not try this at all. Right. The author did not go and burn things on purpose, you know. You're going to have some new followers to your uh, Instagram, Annie, uh, for the local Yeah, the police and the FBI. <laughs> oh, they already are after me for my bad language. Okay. <laughs> the, the chemical reaction is oxidation, and it's it's right there in the uh, in the title. Well, um, I'm kind of going to disagree with you there, Josh, that it's, I mean, it is oxidizing, but the, when it's just rust, you get kind of different things. And when it's burning, I mean, if that's still called oxidation, I understand it, but it's not just natural oxidation. You know, there's a forced oxidation maybe, and with the other stuff that gets mixed in with it, you know, because you can, you know, I, I have rusty things in the yard all over the place. And they don't do these real rainbow of colors and textures that like the burn dumpsters do. But you know, there's something that is oxidation. You know, I stand corrected. I understand. Te yeah, te technically, um, fire and rust and the warmth in your body from the metabolizing of chemicals are all identical. Um, it is it is oxygen binding with things. Oxygen is very disruptive, um, and um, so I'm just gonna for a moment, leave that metaphor and I'll return to it in a second. The, the first thing that I saw with this beyond the rust and the, the beautiful rust line um, across the top was, was the fact that whoever made this roof or whatever it was originally um, made an effort to, to waterproof the seams by overlapping and, and entropy and whatever else happened here. Um, thwarted those human intentions to protect that seam, um, ripped it open, revealed it, and and ultimately headed towards destruction in in this beautiful and graceful way. Um, in the history of life on Earth, um, the first thing that came were plants, and the plants originally were just blue green algae, and they produced oxygen as a byproduct of their life process. And, and that didn't matter for the first couple of billion years of life on earth, because earth, like all celestial objects, uh, like all the solar system objects has a ton of iron and the iron just uh, oxidized and, and rusted and, and sucked up all the available oxygen. And then somewhere around two and a half billion years ago, there was what was called the great oxygenation crisis where, uh, um, where the rust, um, where all the rust that could rust was done and the oxygen had nowhere to go and began to build up in the atmosphere and it was disruptive. It was free radicals oxidizing the plant life and threatening to wipe out life on Earth. And uh, and that would have happened if if uh, evolution on its own hadn't had uh, created animals who who take the oxygen and 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 bind it with their uh, with the carbon and uh, to oxidize to, to to create metabolism and then exhale carbon dioxide. I'm sorry for the science lecture, but this is oh, this is cool. what saved life on Earth was the rise of animals that that literally eat the oxygen that was otherwise going to destroy the life that was produced by plants. And ever since then, we've had this duality of plants and animals, which which closed the loop on oxygen. Um, so. Um, Anyway, that's not, not that that's that's neither here nor there, but it it speaks to the danger to the uh, um, the explosive sometimes danger of oxygen. Um, anyway, sorry, I'm I'm off on oh, a that's tangent. Really super cool. Yeah, yeah that was very interesting. Josh. I really because I absolutely adore rust and aging and stuff like that, and I don't know why I do. So it's really exciting for me to hear. I was just saying to my daughter, hence I was off screen. Um, I was just like, wow. Ooh, 
it's nice to actually have some kind of verified background about maybe why I do that's out of my consciousness. So thank you. <laughs> that was really fascinating, Josh. I have a question about fire. Um, it, I find that a lot the dumpsters um, the, that have that have caught on fire that the surface is pearlized and it, they're iridescent. Um, um, is that a melting of the surface or is what is going on there? Why does it ch flash all these different colors and pearlize? Yeah, I mean, I, so it, 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 the answer is it depends. Um, so if you if you just apply heat to bare metal, you'll find those uh, pearlescent, you'll find um, rainbows emerge. And it's because there are different thicknesses of the oxidized metal on the surface. And when it's um, when and, and, and depending on the thickness and Taras, of course, is an astronomer and can 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 um, give us greater detail but it it it's changing um the way light is is being um uh, reflected so where it's thicker we get warm tones and where it's thinner we get blue tones and where it's absent we just get mirror we get you know, white metal tones. Um, however, if you're talking about paint and other materials, like you often find on dumpsters, dumpsters tend to be painted where they're burned, then, then we're not getting the bare metal, we're getting other materials that have also um, changed the way that they're reflecting light. So if you have, uh, you know, um, white paint, uh, it's reflecting all tones, but as it burns, it loses its ability. I mean, because of the lead or whatever other, you know, titanium oxide or whatever chemical are in there are now being um, coated by uh, um, the products of uh, of the burning the the soot and whatever then that's that's uh complicating its ability to reflect all the wavelengths of light at the same time and so um it's preferring some wavelengths to others and that's why we're getting different colors um so that's the very cool thank you, thank you. <laughs> I think thank that's you. what i was asking Thank you, Wendy. Very nice. OK, I well, was, I was just uh, wanted to, uh, to also to add that it's I also like often thinking myself that I would like to reproduce this at home. I just put but uh, so you just shouldn't forget one dimension time. So and that's interesting that fire actually it's kind of spits up things. You, you see that it's a. Uh, with many processes that it takes very long time, but with the with fire you can just burn this uh, this uh, ash whatever, and then it's ready. Like uh, that's I never seen uh, thought about this actually. Uh, it just came to me now. That fire I, speeds I, up oxidization. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the, all the different time scales, like you know, the slow burning of your metabolism is one time scale. Fire is another, but then there's even faster than fire. Uh, explosions are the exact same uh, chemical equation. Well, not exact same, but they're oxygen um, binding to things. It can happen very, very quickly, like in uh, dynamite or uh, or uh, nitroglycerin. It's this. It's oxygen is binding, but it's happening at an increased rate, so that energy is released very suddenly in an explosive way. But it's really all just oxygen binding. Yeah. Okay, that's what oxygenation means, oxygen binding with something. Oh. Right, oxygen. Have you, have you got any good links to reading about this? Because I find it fascinating. Just... Sure. Uh, I'm the sure last... we can come up with some. I'll Thank just, I'll, we're almost, we're just doing, about to land this uh, beautiful plane in the next 15 minutes or so. The last image here I have is from uh, Michelle Pollock who left. Uh, but uh, I'll just leave it up if anyone wants to say anything before we uh, before we kind of summarize and finish up. Uh, yeah, she... Oxidized leaves. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> These are hostas. Hosta la vista. Oh, that's great. That one I get. <laughs> the hosta la vista, hosta la vista, series. Oh my god! Why hosta, oh. not hosta? <laughs> because these types of leaves, these leaves are hostas. Oh, these are hosta leaves. Yeah. 
I've died. I and my mom has hosta leaves in front of the house, so that's the one leaf I know. They're beautiful, uh, geometric, <laughs> ribbed, ribbed, yeah. lo- big, big green ribbed leaves that that uh, have beautiful white flowers. But this is them in their least uh, showy phase of their uh, life form. You know, like they're 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 really vibrant, beautiful, bushy flowers. Um, Ooh, uh, leaves. Um, and I imagine they're winter hardy. Yeah, they're what are, uh, perennials, I guess. They come up every year. You cut them back, and they come up, and oh, they cool. grow very uh, prolifically. Oh. And they have like a kind of a they grow like underground, a deep base, like a heart, and then and then you can cut it off at different whatever, and and place and and plant it wherever on your yard. Yard it grows like like crazy. So they're very beautiful, common for landscaping, especially in this, in our area. I've never uh, seen this. Before. Yeah, we have hostas all over my house too. Um, but, but somehow I've never seen them like this. Hmm. Yeah. Because I didn't look, obviously. <laughs> well, this is kind of like to get the end of the cycle. Most people like by this time you've cut the hostas down and have winterized them. This is kind of like right before you kind of winterize, but after they've lost the translucence, like with like kind of this stage where they're translucent and kind of uh just a husk of their mm-hmm. former selves. Over there. Like like a ghost. Yes, again, like <laughs> a ghost. Beautiful. They even look rusty as if they're metal too. You know those. I mean, they do call them rust spots on leaves. You know that that develop this dust and crud on there. But you know. Yeah. Well, and again, terminology. Talking about how something, how something unnatural can, how can can evoke something uh, organic. Here we you're talking with something organic that's that's doing the opposite, kind of. Uh, giving him a metallic feel or a yeah that's neat and also i for this one i just like how the the center is absent like the focus is at the center which is the absence and then you have like the very clear kind of wind or like um again i don't know it's getting sexual for me but the curtains of the hole <laughs> opening but being this like, again, this kind of mysterious uh, entrance place uh, that is the focus that you're very close up on, yeah. And the use of unfocused areas, you know, he, the whole thing yes. is totally focused. You have that you isolating, know, yeah. That right. You have the real sharp focus in the front, and then the the fade into you know the the uh, unfocused, Hi, which is great. So so much motion. So much um, and, and, and sensuous motion. Um, these are boudoir curtains. These are uh, rising smoke tendrils. These are uh, uh, a nightgown draping a beautiful body. These are uh, sensuous curvy forms that are that are arising from death and decay. And so it's that same greater theme of 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 looking at something passing away and finding um, beauty in it. And life, yeah, finding life in it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Motion, life, animation, narrative is still like narrative stays alive. We're talking about a guy who's dead, and his narrative has stayed alive through his photos. That we're talking about it afterward. This is the beauty of photography, right here, right? That we can exactly. we can kind of take these images and keep alive, and then we're recording this to put on the internet for you know ever people can learn about this guy's. Of Michael's uh, incredible talents, so I'll just I'm just going to su- do a quick little summary of the notes I made. Like uh, with Miro, we talked about uh, geometry, uh, the mechanical dimensions. Here, let me do this. Bum, bum, bum. <coughs> okay, so here's our little review. So we had uh, the mechanical dimensions, cubism. Soldiers as part of a machine. Uh, what does um, uh, industrial imagery and constructual imagery symbolism? What does it mean now? Uh, then we had 
Uh, next, we had Gudrun's with the pad people. Mysterious composition, structure, color, iris iridescence, corrosion, how it draws in your eye. What is it? <laughs> uh, unexpected beauty of corrosion, the black holes being eye holes, possibly. Uh, Fibonacci, spiraling, math algorithms, how force life force and material flows together uh decay universal and uh how the how something very how death and decay can also suggest something very universal and grand and history within that object um we talked about the sculpture sculpture effect of the iris and that brow of the eye socket there being there um metallic and eroded next we had josh's talking about uh, the opposite of irony evoking forms of loss and grief the absence of something uh mystery a fossil memory foam uh, memor uh material suggesting or uh, synthetic material suggesting organic images that horizon line that is um um suggesting landscapes and division artifacts elephant hills coastal range uh that he spent time in northern california someone hammering on my street for now for no good reason uh here we had sentinel talking about simple elegance with alan a uh, unique view of a much photographed um object uh, isolation of the focus again was a common thing accentuating uh, again very sensual sexual um object in the bottom left corner tend to be another theme lilies came back flowers organic material how he framed things very specifically very intentionally journeys end we had a long talk about this one uh, the beauty of the composition coming back again and again to how composition is king in uh, Michael's work. The abstract, uh, the uh, the space between when you recognize the label on something uh, and and having time, that room for your mind to play. Uh, subtle use of color, intimacy, emotion, drama, uh, not brash, earthy, monochromatic uh sweeping forces of nature beauty uh on the surfaces uh as above so below kind of the macro suggesting great themes and um josh i think talked about unity of how forces manifest in matter across life death growth and decay uh, and yes more about natural algorithms the macro versus the aerial perspective that it can reflect and again, we talked to two about the flipping of the eye of the of the three D image of how the foreground can uh, become the background. The head in this image becomes a hole through which we saw trees and leaves and and the continuation of the mountain line in there. Uh, oh, and also just to the image of life and death, uh, the head being a skull coming out into like the the spirit or the particles of the essence of a person returning to the balance of nature i thought it was a beautifully fitting image to for this for this uh, moment uh then we had a lot of fun or a lot of uh, discussion on the barrel series the ash tracks his playful nature his house burning down and him taking his taking pictures of the burning of his house like wow not and being brave to take pictures of something sacred and something traumatic and painful even and to document that that moment um the angel too the angel at the end the angel that he talked about in the ashes if you look at this photo where it says lifelong learning right at the end where the g is there is a hooded woman a hooded angel in that right at the end of that sentence at the end of that title a small it's about the, just wow. a little bit bigger than the g just a little bit bigger than the g itself to the right Diagonally down to the right is a little angel. That's the angel in the ashes. Okay. Next, we talked more about the ash tracks, right? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Char Marie had a beautiful eulogy talking about uh, talking about them, which I'll post as well. 
oxidization was the last one or one of our last ones talking about entropy disorder uh what is the material a lot of times you don't know the mysterious material that we're what we're looking at uh mm -hmm. unexpected beauty uh and uh, that he's finding beauty in the opposite of landscapes and sunsets of the everyday, the rusted, the decomposing, the garbage, the burnt, the finished, the used. Finding something man-made within the organic. We talked about left bottom, the focus on the left bottom of the frame. Uh, about how oxidization of fire, rust, of energy in the body are all the same process at different scales and speeds, which was really cool. And uh, the process of oxidization of the history in the history of earth of how it had to do with uh, animals needing to be invented to take up the oxygen that otherwise would destroy plants. Fascinating. Okay. So that was a long summary, but I thought it was fitting just to cover it all because uh, there was so much great, so much great stuff here. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing the screen so we can all come back together. Um, where is my screen? No, I just want the zoom. I just want the zoom again. Stop sharing, stop sharing. There we go. Now we're all back on the same screen again. Yes? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Wow. What a uh, beautiful uh, way to spend a couple hours and a deservedly, yeah, a, a worthy um, photographer to spend that time on. It was really beautiful and moving for me at times. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, sharing your thoughts on Michael's amazing photography and on photography in general. And um, we will uh, end it uh, end it here. Thank you to everyone on Hintology <laughs> who uh, watched. I think it was me. And um, we will uh, post it. We'll have this posted and share it again soon, along with the information from the chat. Uh, maybe yeah, everyone, before we finish the chat, put your, put your name. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Before I forget, I mean, we talked about it before, but also take a look at Hintology's book. <coughs> haven't already Wonderful. it's gorgeous victor did it almost all by himself a lot of a lot of the poetry the layout is really beautiful it is uh just you know and a lot of a lot of us are in here wendy's in it paul's in it there's poetry it's just Gosh. a beautiful it's just beautiful it cost me about 50 dollars with uh with mail and everything and if you buy more than one it's uh it gets cheaper with price um price breakdown so Highly, highly recommend what Victor did here. It's amazing, beautiful work. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Does anyone have anything else to say? Or are we good? Um, is it Thanks. this group? We were going to, for December, we were going to do like uh, put abstract music to to a picture. Do you remember this? We, we oh. talked about it in October and... So okay yeah let, oh, let's revisit let's revisit that yeah. in our emails and we'll uh right. we'll find a topic a good topic for our for our next one that we, that we have we time to prepare to do that but we didn't think we could do it in a month so we said maybe in december okay. we can get to that yeah one, so yeah. let's let's I circle think it's back. like a one minute video or something yeah okay <laughs> yes. tim can check the notes and tell us what we said we wanted to do <laughs> yeah i'll check the, i'll check the notes yeah and i'll and i'll we'll post okay. i'll put it in an email for the group to to follow up on in the next few days great okay. thank and you also so next much. next week muriel yeah. has an exhibition who does <laughs> muriel. i do oh okay Thanks, good yeah. yes yeah. can you post a tell link us about it can you tell us about or post a link to your exhibition in the chat and we'll include it with the anything we do? Well, I can post a link, but it's not really, um, I mean, the, the website of it, uh, it's, um, it is a collective show, you know, and the website is not so well done, but uh, well, I, I can, I, I do that. Okay. Uh, but tell us, uh, tell us uh, yeah, tell us about the show. Yay! Sounds very exciting. 
yeah it's um it's um i i put the link it's it's quite um it's called a, a contemporary uh, art art uh, uh, contemporary art uh, exhibition and it's gather it gather about uh, 50 artists and they are quite uh, i'm happy because um I, I can put also the the um, uh, Instagram uh, account, and uh, I, I mean the artists uh, are, are that uh, are going to to show their work are, are great, I think. And each of us have a little space, but uh, I mean uh, as a standard, so it it permits to to organize to have a own scenography. And I will uh, show about, um, um, I mean, 12 uh, images, 12 uh, photographs. Nice. So that's great. Going, do you have a theme? Do you have a theme for the photo for the photographs? Yes, it is called um, uh, Sous le Sol des Villes, under our, under our town's uh, ground. And it is about puddle, um, all, all our uh, puddle uh, reflection. Reflection. Ah, okay, nice. Okay. Puddle reflections. Good. Yeah, yeah. Puddle reflections. And one of my favorite. Uh, sorry. One of my favorite themes. Gorgeous. I did a, did a soundscape to um, the wind blowing. Well, the wind was blowing on the puddle, and there was light on the puddle, and then I did a soundscape to it with music. So I adore puddles. Nice. And I know Nirvana. If she was here, she would she would uh, raise her hand for puddle reflections. Yeah. Uh, nice okay well keep us posted about your show and uh and yeah and I also i bought tickets muriel so oh, i can't oh yeah <laughs> oh you're going How fantastic I, I so yeah, when, when 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 are you coming uh i come on um uh, on friday and leave on monday oh that's so I, great i take uh two days wonderful off. i'll stay at my friend's uh place yes so. okay Wonderful. So like, you have to take some pictures forward. together. You have to take some pictures together. I yes. forget. I, I meet That's with correct, Lauren. Taras. Lauren I'm lives, very happy. Lauren yeah, lives a minute away from me. We meet once in a while. I never, I should share a photo of us together. Like we actually meet in person every once in a while. So it's <laughs> nice to. I saw Alice. That's Hello. very bad. <laughs> right? We should take every once in a while when any time of us, anytime we actually meet in person, we should document the, you know. <laughs> Until we have our great show together, where we all convene here in Toronto or in New York or somewhere, Paris, to have our group show where we have, you know, we rent out an entire floor of a gallery. And and sounds know. cool. <laughs> right? Eventually. We'll work, to it. we'll work up to it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful <laughs> afternoon, day, night, wherever you are. Thanks, Thanks. Sure. We'll see you in the Bye. next one. Thanks, Bye. 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 Goodbye. Congratulations, Bye. Miriam. Yes. Congratulations. And uh, thank you, Michael, wherever you are. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. And meeting. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.